You out there guys, this is Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft and this is a general airsoft tactics video. Basically all the little tips and tricks I've picked up over the years that I want to share with you guys. Now I need to point out this is not a super serious elite hardcore operators only video because come on guys, this is airsoft, we're here to have a laugh and have some good times in the games. Now these are just some things I think we'll, some players could use to increase their survivability but we're not going to go into like extreme pie in the corner hardcore SWAT approved tactics. Nah, nah mate. So what I've done is I've uh, split this not into Woodland and CQB because I think they tend to overlap a little bit. So we're just going to go into things to try and do in the games and things to try and avoid. And so with that in mind, we'll crack on with it. So we'll start with a simple one then. Flagging is essentially when an airsoft is taking cover behind a building or a tree or something, but their gun barrel is sticking out of the corner. So it's painfully obvious to anybody that's watching them that that's where they are. And if they go to raise their barrel, they know before time and are preemptively shooting at that person before they can even get their gun shouldered. You really want to avoid this. Essentially, all you have to do is just be mindful of where your gun barrel is poking. Maybe take a half step back from cover just so that your entire body is obscured from it. Just so you don't let everybody else on the field know that you're about to take a shot around the side of it. So tree cancer is a term that applies mainly to people using ghillie suits or any kind of big bulky forms of personal cover. So if you're wearing a ghillie suit and you take cover behind a tree or a building or something and you stick it around the side, it just forms this big humongous growth on the outside of it that just looks out of place and it really makes people's eyes get drawn to it. So essentially if you are taking the effort to use a ghillie suit, you might as well use it properly. You want to be lying low in long grass or ferns or shrubs or something. Basically in the open but obscured in the visual cover where most airsofters won't lie because airsofters like hard cover. They like the ability to know that they're hiding behind something that a BB can't shoot through. So people are not expecting someone in a ghillie to be lying essentially in the open but um, obscured by long grass. If you're using a ghillie, avoid the tree cancer by trying to stay in the open and avoiding the sides of buildings. So let me set the scene. You and some teammates are stacked up on the door, ready to go into a room, and the guy next to you starts, Right guys, on three! One, two, three! What do you think's gonna happen when you breach that room? Because I've been in the room that's about to be breached many times, you can hear the people on the outside prepping the charge. The appropriate response for me is to be shooting at that door before they've even gone around the corner. By all means, talk to your team, but try to avoid giving the plan away. If your enemy knows what you're going to be doing, then he's going to be able to react so much quicker to it and knows ahead of time what you're planning. Communicate, but try and keep it to yourselves. Now, initially, it might seem a really obvious and instinctual thing to do to hug cover as much as physically possible, but I'd advise against it, to be honest. Don't press yourself bodily up against the cover you're hiding behind. Take a half step back. If you imagine that your enemy's on the other side of the cover and is shining a light and the cover you're hiding behind is casting a shadow, everything in that shadow is obscured from his view and therefore his line of fire. That includes everything behind the cover, not just the first few inches of it. If you take that half step back, it allows you to be a much more reactionary, you're a lot less sluggish in going around the corner or doing other manoeuvres. And you don't really sacrifice that much protection just by taking that half step back. It allows you to avoid flagging and might able to, to pre-shoulder before popping out and taking shots. So in playing some airsoft games, you're inevitably going to find yourself where you have to hold down a same location or a specific bit of cover. That's fine. It's going to happen. But when you're doing that, what I'd try and suggest is to avoid peeking the exact same spot of that cover. So if you're behind a tree, for example, vary up whether you go around the left or right side of it. How high you are, so you might fire from standing, crouched or prone. By varying it up, what it allows you to do is trick the enemy that's shooting at you. Because I can guarantee you, his sights are focused on the very last spot where he saw you. So if you vary up the height or side which you pop around that cover, there's a split second where he's got to realise you're not there anymore, you're there and adjust his aim. And that split second could allow you to poke out, take some shots at him, take him out of the game, or at the very least just force him back into cover. So a little thing to consider. Now in almost every airsoft game, getting your players medics and back into the game is essential to winning it. But here's something to consider. If there's a guy that needs a medic, it means he was shot. The person that shot him could still be in the general area watching the same location. So if you sprint out there to help your guy that needs a medic, chances are you're just going to get shot yourself. What you need to do in this situation is actually clear the area first, or at the very least, scan for targets and try and pull the guy behind cover before starting making if the rules allow it. If you're the person who has been shot and need a medic, now you can usually only just say medic whilst you're waiting for one. 
So what I like to do is if I know the person is there in that general area and it would be dangerous to try and medic me, I stay completely silent. Don't say a thing at all. If, however, I know the area is clear or I need that medic urgently so I can perform an action, I'll say medic, medic, medic really quickly to try and get that point across. However, don't just like nod in the direction of where the person who shot you was or just stare very poignantly in his direction. That is very much considered cheating and a little bit shitty, to be fair. Now, I saw some people aren't going to agree with what I'm saying about with just saying medic aloud, but I think that's fairly in keeping to the rules of it because you're not explicitly telling your team what to do or what to look out for. Now, a lot of the regulars are going to know the value of this, but some of the new people might not. Suppressive fire is essentially where you're trying to shoot in the general direction of your enemy, but you're not trying to hit him per se. The objective of suppressive fire is to force your enemy behind cover so that your teammates can go on a flanking route to take them out properly or perform an action, complete an objective, whatever. You just want your enemy behind cover and not for him to poke out and take shots at your guys. So don't think that there's no inherent value in shooting at the enemy. Just because you can't see him or because he's behind cover, you can still force his head down so the rest of your team can do stuff. Um, as I say, if you shoot someone whilst performing suppressive fire, brilliant, bonus. But that's not the objective of it. You want your enemy to keep his head ducked down so the rest of your guys can do whatever they need to do. Now, whilst this is more of a good habit to have rather than an outright tactic, having decent trigger discipline means that your trigger finger isn't all constantly on the trigger ready to go, you just rest it on the gun in front of it. Essentially, if you're pointing at the enemy team, you'll know there are targets out there, then by all means have that finger on the trigger ready to go. But if you're just around with your teammates or in your base or something, keep it off the trigger, because I can guarantee your team won't appreciate it if you shoot them or yourself by accident. Now, this applies to a situation where you and an enemy player are both engaging each other, you both know you're there, you're both behind solid cover. Essentially, winning the corner is where you're at the point where you're out with your gun barrel raised, sighted at your enemy, but he's ducked behind cover. This means that you have a bit more time. If he was to poke out, you would see it in advance, you'd be able to get shots in before he would get shots at you. Now, in order to do this, you need to be a little bit brave when you're shooting at the target. What most airsofters tend to do is, when they're engaging another target, they'll take a few shots and then instantly duck back into cover. What you actually need to do is, after taking those shots, keep your head out and your gun raised. What you tend to find is that airsofters, without knowing it, will stick to a sort of beat timing, which is, tend to be about three seconds long in terms of when they think it's okay to poke back out of cover again. Now, don't poke your head out if the enemy's already shooting at you. Of course, this is a very easy way to get shot. Wait until there's a break in his fire, take your shots. If he ducks back in, keep your head out and your gun raised. Now, what you're waiting for here is for him to poke his head back out. You can already put the shots down because you're ready to go and he is not. This is called winning the corner and it gives you a lot more options as I'll go into in the next points. Now, there's been many a times where I've managed to confuse the enemy that's shooting me just by changing position. If you're engaged with another target, what most people like to do is stay in the exact same position. Maybe they think they've got a really solid, good bit of cover and maybe if they think they'll just wait long enough, they'll eventually get that perfect shot. But what I like to do is, if there's a break in enemy fire and he's not looking directly at me, I will change position, just move to a different one. Try and win the corner before achieving this. Essentially, you don't want your enemy to see you doing this, whether that means you've kept his head ducked back into cover because you're putting suppressive fire on him, or maybe he's just looking the other way. Swap position, because what that'll do is he'll forget to, well, he won't forget, he won't even know to not expose that certain bit to himself to your new bit of cover. So it might give you a bit bigger of a target to aim at, and so you're more likely to take them out of the game. As I say, try and win the corner before moving. If he sees you change position, this is all null and void. So you have to do it when he's not looking, either because he's looking the wrong way, or because you've kept his head back into cover. Now, keeping a low profile is just generally a good habit to get into. Even if you're stuck behind cover, presenting the smallest possible target to your enemy is always a good thing. When you're on the move, however, you want to try and keep about the same height as the surrounding terrain, cover or vegetation, whatever. So roadie or crouch running is a really good option. If you're behind like a, a low barrier or something, keep your head down whilst you're moving so you're sticking to cover even though you're on the move. If, however, you're in a, in a completely open space, don't bother crouch running, try and just sprint out of there as quick as possible. You're absolutely going to get seen, so it's much more important that you leave the open space and seek cover as soon as possible. Now, pre-shouldering is exactly what it sounds like, and you'll see me doing this a lot in my videos. Essentially, what I'll do is I'll take a half step back, get my gun shouldered before popping out of cover, and only then pop out and take the shot. 
So essentially, just give yourself some room. I'd like to find out, know where my target is pointing at, get my sights raised so that where I stood up, I'd be pointing straight at him, and only then stand up and take the shot. It only saves you fractions of a second whilst taking the shot at an enemy player, but those fractions can mean the difference between taking them out of the game and not. Now, this one shouldn't really need to be said at all, but here we are anyway. Communicate with your team. Try and just let them know any bit of information that's relevant to the event. Do you see the enemy? Even if they're out of range, let your teammates know where they are. If you're shooting a target, a lot of people tend to forget to talk to their team about the person they're shooting at. So if they get taken out of the game, there's now a blank spot in the team's cover so the guy can just creep in without anybody knowing. Let your guys know what you're shooting at. Do you see the enemy? Where are they? How many of them are there? And what direction they're going in or what cover they're hiding behind? Saying, for example, you're in a woodland game and you say, there's a guy behind the tree, that's not really useful to when you're surrounded by woodland. Try and make it distinctive. So, for example, there's a guy hidden behind the silver birch with the split in it. Or there's a guy 30 metres to the front, 5 metres to the left of that marshal. Try and give a little bit of information to your team when you're calling out the enemy players. Now, I think it'd be fairly safe for me to say that the majority of airsofters don't actually know any legitimate military hand signs. However, that's not stopped me from using some really basic ones when I know there's an enemy nearby and I'm trying to silently communicate that to my teammates. It's really simple. Seen two of them over there. It's so basic that anybody can understand it and it's really helped convey that information when I know full well there's a person five metres away and would hear me if I would try and tell that verbally to my team and give away all of our positions. So whilst military hand signs, actual ones are probably a bit overkill, just some really basic ones, heard a guy over there, probably three of them. Simple little things like that can let your team know there's a threat nearby. Now, this is less of a tactic per se, it's just something that I've kind of noticed over the years, and I don't expect people to dedicate a full loadout just to exploit this little thing, but I think it's worth mentioning regardless. What I tend to run is like a spring sniper and an AEG as a backup, so if someone gets within my minimum engagement with the sniper, I'll bring out the AEG. But what I found as a side perk of that is that if you're using guns that have two different firing operations, so a spring, an AEG, a gas blowback, a non-blowback, people will think there's more than one target out of there. There's been legitimate situations where I was engaging someone and later after the game they told me they were convinced they were fighting three people because there were three different sounds going off. And you can use that to your advantage. If you're a lone sniper by yourself and the enemy knows where you are and they're trying to creep in, if you pull out an AEG and start shooting, they might think you've got a teammate out there. So they're going to approach a lot more cautiously, might let you move around, maybe take out one or two of them as well. Just a tiny little thing I've noticed. It's a fun and completely coincidental thing. And I don't expect people to, like, as I say, dedicate an entire loadout to this, but just a funny little thing that I thought people might find useful. And there we have it, that's the accumulated knowledge of over seven years of playing Airsoft. As I say, it's more like tips and tricks as opposed to strict military doctrine, but just some little things I think people could listen to and maybe improve their survivability in the games just a little bit. Now, if you think I've missed anything vital or you've got your own things you want to share, just leave them down in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this has been Dale of Lone Mombat Airsoft.